Good morning and welcome to the channel. Welcome back to Street Speed 717. My name is Mike and uh, this is basically a Corvette channel with uh, some McLaren and truck thrown in. We are saying goodbye. Yes, it is finally time to say goodbye to our 2019 ZR1. We are getting rid of that car in preparation for the big wing ZR1. If you are new to the channel, this one has the uh, little wang on it, as you can see. This was my non-ZTK ZR1 and the ZTK ZR1 is going to be arriving at the dealership here in like three days. Fucking hype about that. It is going to be awesome. So that's why I'm not even sad about getting rid of this car. You know, this one was always gonna be temporary and uh, I'm ready for the real one. We did do a lot with this car though, that is for sure. One of the first ones to hit the drag strip, uh, the first manual one to hit the drag strip. And a 10.9 bone stock, and no, not just stock, meaning stock engine and everything else. Stock meaning all the way down to the tires. I did not run on drag radials. Took it to a McLaren track day where I ran it on the track with this car and uh, a P1, a 675LT, and it was keeping up just fine and doing really well. I really like the way it behaved on track. I can only imagine the ZTK vet would be even better. And uh, we were one of the first ones to dyno, actually I think pretty much the first one to dyno a new ZR1 and it made basically 670 wheel horsepower, which is very impressive. And we put on a Corsa X-Pipe and it made 700 horsepower to the wheel. And that really shows you how capable this platform is and the potential that it has because with a pulley, an exhaust, an intake and a tune, you're looking at like a 750 to 800 wheel horsepower car. The good news is now that I have my permanent ZR1 coming, we can start really modifying. The only reason why I've held off on doing more to this car because I always knew it wasn't staying. <laughs> Being without that sound for a couple days is gonna suck. One thing's for damn sure, I have filled this car up a lot in the month and a half that I've owned it. I think I feel like I've honestly gone through at least, like at minimum, 20 tanks of gas. Like there's no way I haven't been to a gas station 20 times. I don't know why that is. But it's something. That woman just carried that baby up to that running lawnmower and the guy didn't even hear it hear them until she was like right next to him. That is, uh, I feel like that is a really, really bad idea and I'm not even a parent. So we are here at Phil's Body Shop, not at Whitmore Chevy because we are picking up another car and it's right over there. Bet you didn't think we'd be getting one last drive in the Pro Charge Z, but we are. That car just got done getting painted and uh, if you remember the video where I sold it, it had some little paint imperfections on the fender and whatnot. That got fixed and now we are taking it to the dealership. So here she is in all of her yellow glory. You can see, wow, yeah, look at that. Perfect job. There was a little crack there I showed you guys on video. That's done. Look at that down there. The paintwork is really good. That match is like perfect. Wow, really, really good paintwork on that fender. That is looking great. So the new owner is going to be happy, I'm sure. And that's all taken care of. As is the front bumper up here. You can see no more paint chips. So yeah, she is, uh, Looking great. The Plastic Fantastic is back in action. Just uh, just gotta casually open up our door bar here. Holy shit, it's hot. There's his t-shirt. Guy who bought it wanted a free t-shirt. I figured I could throw that in for him. All right, let's do it. <laughs> you know, it does tend to shake a little bit more than the ZR1. I don't know, it must be the tuning. Here we are finally at Whitmoyer after like an hour and a half drive, which it shouldn't be, but traffic sucks. This guy's checking out the Viper. He should buy it. That looks like it's right up your alley, buddy. You should go for it. Have a great time. Have a ball with that Dodge Viper. Now, I don't know if this is officially the last time you're gonna see the Z06, but it might be. I believe the guy's coming on Tuesday. Uh, so by the time this video goes up, it might be gone for good. I'm totally ready to move on. It's different on video. Don't get me wrong, the car is really fast. It's an animal, it's fun, but um, having to own it and like you start it and the whole neighborhood fucking hears it. You gotta live with it every day. It's always in need of something. Like every 1,000 horsepower car is always going to need work and upkeep and uh, you have other vehicles, like trust me. There are reasons why I don't feel bad about letting it go. So those are the updates on the Corvettes and uh, here's a fun fact. For the first time in over two years, I am Corvetteless. I got no Corvettes. At one point I had three Corvettes. I had two C7s, uh, two C7Zs and a C4. Currently, 
I got none. I have none at all, but I will be having another one soon. Hope you guys are having a great Memorial Day weekend. By the way, it's raining right now um, in PA. Hopefully it's not raining where you are at. So I don't have any vets at the moment. Like I said, another one is on the way. Should be here in like three days. So I dropped off the ZR1 at the body shop. Beaver picked it up, took it to the dealership where it's gonna be prepped, detailed, all the good stuff. And it is for sale. Now we do have a couple buyers uh, that seem like they are going to pull the trigger. Like if this guy doesn't, we have another one right in line. But just in case those two fall through for whatever reason, it is available. Now, I know some people are gonna be like, oh, you, you drag raced your car, like I wouldn't want that. But the reality is like, if you took my car and a brand new one and you took them apart, and I mean like really apart, every single piece, and you laid them out on the ground, you would not be able to tell the difference between one car or the other. And that is the reality. You know, people like to make it seem like it's a big deal. It's really not. Cars are actually meant to be driven. Matter of fact, you'd rather have one that has been driven because you know it's not gonna have any problems. So, um, and also, you know, we're not trying to charge any over MSRP bullshit. Um, it's gonna be a, a fair regular price as any other one would be. You know, some people are trying to flip them on the used market. I've already seen a couple, I've seen a couple ZR1s, people trying to get like 170, 180 out of them, which is crazy. So if you want one, you know, maybe in your area, you can't find one under MSRP or whatever, or at MSRP, you can't find one that somebody isn't attempting to make a markup on, um, check out the car, uh, check out Whitmore Auto Group, and of course, Matt Beaver himself, he will hook you up. My 2019 ZR1 is gone, and my 2017 Z06 is gone, and uh, yeah, I only have the McLaren and the truck at the moment, which by the way, I've been meaning to do an update on the Duramax. I've done tons of new things to that truck. Of course, I did take the rack off, but lots of other stuff as well. And uh, if it's nice tomorrow, I will be filming that. So if you're here for the Duramax content, that's coming tomorrow. Lots of cool changes. That truck is gonna be awesome for the summer. With all those updates out of the way, let's go ahead and finish up with a Q&A. All right, Q&As, I love doing them. Uh, I usually post a picture up on Instagram and I tell people to ask their questions below. And uh, so far we have a little over 800 in 12 minutes, which is a fuck ton. So let's just get right into it. Pat Royal, I have pink hair now, Mike. Can we still be friends? That's, that's gonna be a tough one. YTEA40, with all your cars, what challenges come with daily driving each one individually? Like challenges of the ZR1, 570S, Duramax, and even the old Z06. Uh, really nothing. There's nothing bad about daily driving any of them. They're all pretty good. I mean, obviously, if you really got to haul something, you use the truck, but they're all uh, pretty good. Jacob M98, can you send me something for free? Support our troops. He appears to be in the army based on the uh, the multicam there. Um, I could send you, I don't know, I could send you a key tag, a t-shirt. That's about all I got, short of sending you a car. Can you please do gaming videos? Can you please do gaming videos? I'd love to watch your content and also what are your plans with the Corrado? Well, Corrado's uh, in the process of being built right now, not really, just wheels and shit. Um, and yeah, I, I streamed with Mikey the other night, uh, OGZilla, on Instagram if you wanna check him out. And uh, we had fun, Fortnite, I mean, we got shit on constantly, but we had fun and people liked it. We had, it was four o'clock in the morning and we had like 88 people watching, which was pretty cool. Uh, are you gay? That's for me to know and you to wonder about. When will you get a project truck? Uh, maybe this summer. I do want to get a cheap truck and do some fun shit with it. Uh, will the Duramax get a new hood? No, I, I like my hood uh, where it's at. What's your go-to meal at Chick-fil-A? Obviously, the spicy chicken sandwich. Want to race uh, CRF250R against your Raptor? Uh, well, my Raptor's uh, 700. I feel like that'd be a good race. What sports did you play in high school, uh, wrestling and soccer? When is the next quad video going to be? Soon. I really got to get it out there. Now, I did, like I mentioned, I modified the truck to haul the quad, so now I can haul it easily, and uh, I will be taking the quad to some cool places. How do you feel about all your accomplishments at uh, such a young age? Well, you know, I'm pretty proud, but mainly, I'm not really that proud of myself. I just did it for, you know, mainly my mom, like having a single mom raising me, and uh, to give, you know, whenever she needs anything, I can do it for, you know, and that was pretty cool to get her her dream car, which luckily wasn't a fucking like Rolls Royce or Range Rover, it was a Mini Cooper. I was able to give that to her last Christmas. Um, so, you know, just being able to help my family if they need it um, and being able to take care of myself and have the life that I have with my family, you know, my girlfriend, our two dogs, um, you know, it's, it's really fun. We have a great house and, uh, you know, I, I have, Pretty much everything I want. So, you know, I'm just really, I'm very happy and very fortunate too. You know, YouTube is, I mean, I had a good job, like I can always get a good job, but YouTube is um, just something that happened for me 
luckily and I work very hard at it like don't get me wrong but there's always an element of luck too like you know some channels blow up really fast some channels have good content and for whatever reason they just don't blow up so there is an element of luck too and I recognize that you know I recognize it's not you know some of it is luck for sure so I'm, I'm also very thankful that YouTube worked out for me are you still getting a Raptor? No, uh, by the way, Ford announced there is going to be no V8 Raptor, no V8 option. So that rumor is dead. Therefore, your boy Mike will not be getting a Raptor. I'm not buying a V6 truck. I just, I can't do it. I, I'm sorry, I can't do it. How many times do you shit a day? I mean, at least, at least once out of all your, uh, out of all your cars, sorry, which is your family's favorite? My family's favorite, uh, my mom likes uh, the McLaren the most. Um, I'd say mostly the McLaren and just because like, you know, my family's not super into cars. So like a McLaren being a McLaren and something that's like a supercar, it's like, oh my God, that's the coolest thing. Uh, what is your favorite American car? Corvette. Uh, really? Is that even a question? Will you ever twin turbo your Dirty Max? No, I will not be doing that. Uh, just, let's see, get, get something different. If I drive to Hershey, can I have a ride? That's a negative ghost rider. If I start, if I give one ride to one person, then I got to do it for everybody. So I don't really do it at shows. Now I have taken people for rides as you've seen, but the only reason I, I will say no, it shows. And I, I do feel bad saying it, but I can't because the minute you do it for one, you got to do it for everybody. And then pretty soon you're running your car 50 fucking times down the street. And that is a recipe for disaster. What are your future goals for the channel? Um, I'd like to hit a million subscribers. You know, I got a fucking fly going around in here. I'd like to hit a million subscribers. Uh, but you know, subscriber number has never really been that important to me. I love the support and seeing the number is cool, but as long as you know people enjoy my channel and you know, I try to upload something interesting every day, which is a challenge, you know, it is hard to upload every day, especially like winter time, it's really hard. But I enjoy the challenge. So even though you know, every video isn't gonna be like the craziest thing, but I really do like to provide entertainment for people. And it kind of falls into a routine. Like there's a channel that I watch every day. And if they don't upload, it's like that throws off my whole night. So I like to upload, I like to try to upload every day for people. What color is the ZTK car going to be? It is going to be orange, same as the current car. What happened to your guys' top gear spinoff? Uh, we made two episodes. The second one didn't really do that well. And Troy and Nick, you know, we're all very busy. So I would still love to do another episode at some point. And I'm looking very much into doing a series this summer and starting it up. So I'd like to do a series where we can film the whole thing and we'll have episodes already done. And then we can release them on a weekly basis. That's what I would like to do. But I would film it all ahead of time and then release it. Maybe even we film in the summer and then release it over the winter would be cool. And that would kind of help with that content that inevitably slows down in the winter time. So I'd love to do that. I, I would really love to do that because Top Gear is my favorite show in the whole world. That's what got me into cars, you know, for sure. And, uh, you know, I'd love to do like a cheap truck challenge, some other crazy shit. The, the other hard part with that though is like the legal aspect. Like I would love to build a boat, uh, like an amphibious car. And we all try to do that as a challenge, but like, where the fuck can I do that and not get arrested? So that's the, that's the tough part about doing that kind of stuff is getting the clearance and the legal side of it. But I would love to do it and I definitely will. Um, is this always going to be a Corvette channel, even though you are running out of Corvettes? That's relevant based on what happened today. Uh, yeah, you know, and I've seen comments like, oh, you don't make videos on the Corvette anymore. Well, I made a lot, I made a fuck ton of videos on the ZR1. I was the only person making ZR1 videos basically on the internet. I mean, first the dyno, first drag strip video, um, you know, running tens in a manual on the stock tires, uh, doing, ran a track day with it. So I did a, I did a lot of stuff with the car, modified it. The only reason why it slowed down over the past like week or two is because I'm just waiting to get my new one in and then I'm gonna restart. So that's all it is basically. And it is, if I feel like, you know, I'll make a shit ton of videos with something and then people get tired of it. And then the minute, like I don't for a week, people are like, oh, what, what happened to that car? It's like, well shit, I just did a fuck ton on that vehicle. Uh, that doesn't mean like it's going away forever just because you don't see something for a while. Like Duramax, quite frankly, I haven't had a lot going on with that truck. So it hasn't been on video for like a month. Um, but you know, it, yeah, I mean, it's always a Corvette. Like, don't get me wrong. I've said it multiple times. I do like the McLaren. I actually, will admit that I like driving the McLaren more than even a ZR1 just by a little bit, just because like, it's a really, it's a really fucking good car. And it's, it's, I know it's hard to hear that, but it really is a great car to drive, but there are definitely aspects of the ZR1 I like better. And I still like, I adore Corvettes. Like I wouldn't spend 150 grand 
on a ZR1 if I didn't love them. Like I really love, like I've already had a number of C7 Corvettes and I'm still shelling out the money for a ZR1 because I do love them and they're fucking great. And the ZR1, having a manual 750 horsepower car is, you know, one thing that the McLaren doesn't even come close to. And the sound, like the McLaren sound is nothing compared to a fucking ZR1 or even a base model Corvette. So yeah, it's always gonna be a Corvette channel. Like there's always gonna be a Corvette. When I do a project build this summer, it's gonna be another Corvette. So, you know, that's what I love. So just because there's something different to being in this car and getting a new McLaren, just because there is another aspect doesn't mean that the other aspect is going away or that it's bad. It just means that there's something different. You know, that's all. There's content for everybody, really. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't... This car, it doesn't come through that great on video. You know, it doesn't really sound that good on video. It doesn't uh, really look that great on video. I mean, it looks pretty fucking cool, but I mean, the amount of people who come at, come up to me at shows and stuff and say, wow, like seeing this car in person, it's really cool. Hearing it in person, like seeing it just drive, like trust me, like you gotta see it in person. Come to the call out in June in North Carolina, if you can, if you're close by and watch it run down the strip and just be around and let, you'll, you'll see why it's a, it's a lot of fun. And I know it's not an American car, but it's still pretty fucking cool. And it's not like the Brits aren't our allies. I got a little Union Jack up there next to my American flag. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool car in its own right for sure. And it's all car shit. Like I love all kinds of cars just because, you know, Corvettes are my favorite still, and they are still my favorite. Corvettes will always be my favorite car. Um, you know, that doesn't mean like I'm very much considering getting a GT500 when it comes out. So you know, I like everything. Anything that's a cool car, I'm down for it. You know, I'll try it out. I'll get it, and uh, that would be really cool. And I get a lot of I get a lot of people asking about that. I would absolutely consider a new GT500. Uh, what's the gayest thing you've ever done besides own a Volkswagen? The gayest thing I've ever done. That's that's probably it. Um, you talked about a new Corvette the other day. Do you plan on pre-ordering it when Corvette releases more info? Um, if they make a new C7 uh, version of the Corvette, I probably won't get it just because I feel like the ZR1 is really the ultimate Corvette. Now, maybe they will make like a track car, like an NA track car, but I will absolutely be pre-ordering the C8 Corvette. I mean, I'm already on a list, obviously, but because um, I am the Corvette collector, but I'm very, very excited for that car and I can't wait to, to hear more about it. Um, that I think, I mean, imagine how good the C7 Corvette is. And it, it's not like in the past, you know, in the past, like a C6 Corvette was a good car. It was always a good car, but then it always had that extra piece at the end. Well, it's a good car for the money, right? Now the C7 Corvette is just a good car, period. It's not for the money. It's not like it has a shit interior anymore. It's not like it's not refined. The C7 is just a good car. So the C8 being mid-engine is going to be a really, really good car. And I can't wait to, like I said, I can't wait to hear more about it. What has been the scariest moment for you in a vehicle, whether it be one that has been on the channel before? Um, scariest moment? I, I really haven't been scared in a vehicle ever. I mean, I don't really drive outside of my limits, so I don't put myself in situations where I've been scared. I mean, being on the track for the first time was actually a little bit scary. I'm not going to lie. Like, I thought I was going to go out there and have no problem. But when you're doing a buck 70 on a straightaway and you're coming up to the third braking sign, and like you're just hammering the brakes, like you really have to trust the car. And that's something that you never do on the street. Like on the street, there's some times where you go around a corner, it's like, oh my God, like I almost kind of went off the road there a little bit. And that's like no big deal. On the track, like if you are, if like let's just say for whatever reason, your brakes don't work, like you're probably gonna die because you're gonna hit a fucking wall at 170. Um, so yeah, that was why, and it goes against your brain because your brain is telling you to brake. Like when you're on the street, and you drive, you know, you'll see a curve coming up and your brain tells you when you have to brake. And it's very, it's very easy. Even if it's like you're holding on, like your car can easily do it, provided you have a decent fucking car. Um, on track though, like your brain, to, because you know, the human body and the brain is interested in self-preservation. So the brain tells you to brake when it's, when your judgment, when your hand-eye coordination tells you to, so that you have plenty of time. But if you want to go faster around a track, you have to turn that off. So you have to ignore what your instincts are saying and you have to keep going and keep going and keep going. So your, your mind is like screaming at you to break, but you're not break, but you know, you can't break yet. So you have to wait really long. So that was, that was pretty tough. I did. I got airborne in the McLaren once on a back road. Like I totally misjudged how tall a hill was. 
And I went airborne in the car and came down, but honestly, the, it's so stable, like it wasn't really that. And when I say airborne, it was like a couple inches, but I felt like everything was definitely not on the ground anymore. So that was, <laughs> I mean, that was pretty wild in its own right. Uh, let's pick a good one here for the last one. Uh, I, I have a tendency to ramble on, but I love doing these just because I feel like it's just casual talking. You know, it's not, I don't edit these. Um, it just, you know, whatever I say. So let's find a good one here. Uh, let's see, a lot of questions. A lot of, I mean, it's very similar stuff. So a lot of it's our, I've already answered. And let's see, do you see getting a Lambo in the future? Definitely not after having a McLaren. I would not own a Lamborghini. Ever gonna have kids and trade up to a minivan? I mean, I, I definitely am gonna have kids, but I will not be trading up to a, a minivan. I've never understood that about guys. You know, people be like, oh, you got kids now, you gotta get rid of your toys. Why? Like, why can't you have your fun car and then also like a fucking minivan or whatever you gotta have? Why, why do you gotta sell one? I never understood that. Uh, let's see. Come on. There's gotta be a, there's gotta be something interesting here and totally different. Here's one little bit of drama here. Uh, did you see the new 1320 video where the demon versus ZR1, the guy on there called you out? I did not, but I've had a couple people message me and it's some, uh, demon. I think it's, I don't even know who it is, but I'll race any demon. I don't care. Like, I don't care if it's in my ZR1. If it, any demon on the street, I'll fucking destroy it. Um, any demon on the strip, actually, I'll probably win too, as long as it's not SRT mush. Now that guy, I, I mean, I'll still race him for fun, but I'll get shit on. But every other demon out there I've seen is only running like, I, I've never seen anyone actually get nines with its stock. I mean, I've never seen that yet. So um, SRT mush obviously running nine threes is insane, but every other demon out there is not doing so hot at the strip. So I mean, I ran a 10.5 at 141 in this car and that was spinning. So the mile per hour is there. This car would run nines. Uh, the ZR1 on a drag radial would probably run low to mid tens. So I would totally race a demon uh, on the strip or the street. The street's not gonna be good for a demon. We know that, it's not a roll racing car. I just love to get the Mopar guys going. I'm really not that big of a douchebag. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this upload. If you are stopping in for the first time, please subscribe, take care, have a great day.